You know, as I'm constantly making videos about the perks of being a minimalist, recently, that got me thinking. I'm pretty sure my minimalism journey within these two years weren't as positive as what you guys see on my YouTube channel. But there were also times when I feel lost in the transition of living intentionally. After much thought, I've listed five significant mistakes I've faced during this journey of living a minimalist lifestyle, and let me share with you guys. Seeing examples as criteria. When I started minimalism, no one around me had any clue what is this minimalism about. Whatever knowledge and information I absorbed were all from the internet, and there are people who have been living this kind of lifestyle for years. Most of the time, there are good advices and habits that can improve their lives, but at the beginning, I might have treated them way too seriously. I thought I have to do what they said in order to call myself a minimalist. I need to complete the minimalism game and declutter 500 items to live intentionally. Only if I follow those minimalist rules, then I will become a better minimalist. I saw them as a must do in order for me to become a minimalist and I kind of follow it mindlessly without knowing the purpose behind it. But I feel that's the mistake most beginners will make when they are unfamiliar with the concept initially. Instead of looking at those examples as a criteria, we should look at them as an inspiration for us to shape our own minimalist lifestyle. I mean, it can be way meaningful if we can identify the why before we execute any minimalist habits. I think a great example for me would be a no furniture room. Back in the earlier days of my minimalism journey, I was really inspired by this no furniture room and I wanted to replace my bed with a hammock because I saw Yu Hume from Here You're Living doing it. And I thought it could be a great way for me to declutter my bed and luckily I didn't because it's such a hassle for me to mount it up on the wall. And now as I think about it, I'm so glad that I didn't because it's just something that don't suit my kind of lifestyle. Yoon from Heal Your Living is a great example for a minimalist lifestyle, but I shouldn't see it as a criteria, but more of an inspiration to inspire me to create my own kind of lifestyle. Same thing applies here as well. If you see what I'm doing here is different or not suitable for your context, you should treat it as an inspiration, not a criteria for you to meet. Going too extreme. I'm pretty sure you know the feeling of discovering something new. You start to gain interest and start to dive deep into it. And the next moment when you realize where you are, you are probably way too deep to get out. That kind of happened to my minimalism journey as well. How do I know I'm way too deep into this? That's when I see minimalist as an identity. I kind of have a self-imposed expectation for myself to meet in order to hold on to this minimalist title. I'm not supposed to buy new things. I'm not supposed to have any collection. I should reject logos because they are a sign of conspicuous consumerism. But I'll say, there's a thin line between minimalism and asceticism. If you are not clear about what you want to gain from minimalism, you might be decluttering and rejecting things for the sake of doing it. And at the start, it was hard for me to differentiate if that's minimalism. Or am I just depriving myself from joy? Because my minimalist actions and habits are all influenced by other people's recommendation. Some are valuable, others might not be as beneficial. The only way I can conclude if this thing aligns with my value is by trying it out. And one good example will be digital minimalism. There's no clear rule or examples for one to remove this digital clutter from our life. Some might say 30 days without social media, others might say 30 days without the entire phone and even your computer. And that might be a mistake and that might not be. So you just have to find the balance in between it. Comparison At the very start of the journey, when I'm looking for inspiration, I do compare myself with other minimalists on the internet, looking at how many things they have decluttered, how many things they own, how minimalistic their house are, as if minimalism is a competitive sport in the Olympics, and the ultimate goal is to be the best minimalist. Of course, there's no champion or winners when it comes to minimalism. Who even think of that? That's ridiculous. I was someone who compared myself with others in terms of what I wear. And as I transit into minimalism, I realized not much has changed because I'm still comparing myself with other minimalists. And we all know, comparison is the thief of joy. It will constantly make us think, why aren't we there yet? Instead of appreciating the current view of our journey. 
Not to mention, as we compare ourselves with others, we put our focus on the person we are comparing and never ourselves. Not just for minimalism, but in any areas in our life, once we start to compare, we will always tend to fall into a trap of feeling not good enough. To be honest, there's not much we can compare when it comes to minimalism because how we want to live our life is uniquely up to our own preference. There's no good or bad, it's just how you want to live your life. Judging artists. Have you ever felt this way when you learn something new and that particular thing keep appearing everywhere you go? That's a cognitive bias we often fall for. The bottom my half phenomenon. Some might call it frequency illusion. For example, when I was interested in drip coffee, those coffee brewers start to appear everywhere. But the fact is, they are always there. We just didn't notice. For me, this frequency illusion works against me. I became ultra sensitive to other people's possessions and their consumerism habits. I'll judge them for their flaws based on my minimalist virtue. Why is my dad buying so many excessive things? Why is my mom holding on to that? Why are my friends still buying things for the brand? I mean, don't they know how to live intentionally? It wasn't to the point where I watch other people on the internet and start to criticize them in my head, judging their way of living their life. And the worst part is, none of them is a minimalist. And it's never their intention to live with less. That took me quite a while to realize that what I was doing was really detrimental to my mind. Who am I to say a minimalist lifestyle is the best? And if you live with more, you're doing it wrongly. And because of this realization, I understand that minimalism is not a tool. And the question is never, is minimalism good or bad? Instead, it should be, does minimalism fit into my lifestyle? If we look at it this way, minimalism is just a choice, a way for us to live our life. It's not a criteria for us to judge others if they are living intentionally or not. I guess not all minimalists will experience this, but I'm glad that this realization came before I made further mistakes on hurting people I care about. I can't imagine what would happen if I forced this belief on them. Before we continue, a quick message from our sponsor for today, Skillshare. The fact that you are watching this video tells me that you will be interested in this class I'll be recommending. It's created by Nathaniel Drew, and the class is titled, Document Your Life, Four Methods to Live More Intentionally. And the four methods you will be going through are vlogging, journaling, photography, and reporting your own life. He explains it best. I've developed this class as a response to the empty consumption so widely practiced across the internet and in the 21st century. I have to say, it gave me a whole new perspective on how I should journal and take pictures instead of going through the motions. If you are interested in this, Skillshare is offering 1,000 of you a free trial for their premium membership. And with that, you can enjoy thousands of classes they offer just by using the link in the description below. Even after the trial, Skillshare is really affordable with an annual subscription fee for less than $10 every month. And I'm sure you can receive way more value than what you pay for, considering the amount of quality classes they release consistently. So a huge thanks to Skillshare for always supporting what I do here on this channel. Appreciate it and let us continue. Seeing minimalism as a hobby. Not gonna lie, I used to see minimalism as a hobby instead of seeing it as a tool. And I know it sounds weird, but that made me the most boring person ever. Because I used to see minimalists as the only label I can wear on me. And every other existing label has to go for me to fit in it. And we know that shouldn't be the case. Overemphasizing on the label minimalist made me as blank as a white paper. Minimalism was a great restart to put everything at a clean slate, but it shouldn't stay empty like this all the time. We still have to add things we value into the picture because that's how we truly enjoy what we call life. For me, removing negative habits and toxic mindset on fashion was needed to be done, and minimalism was a reset button for me to reinvent my life. Instead of focusing on what can bring me more value after the reboot, I continue to put my focus on the reset button which is minimalism. A mom who enjoys photography can live an intentional lifestyle. A designer can apply minimalism and intentional living in his work. Or even a millionaire can understand that life is not all about materialism. They are all minimalists, but it's what they value makes them unique to every single one. If we focus too much on having less without thinking how it can bring us more value, 
this too will eventually become a mindless expectation that deprives us from everything, even joy. So these are some of the mistakes I've made throughout my minimalism journey. And I'm not perfect, so some of these mistakes might come back again. I don't know. But frankly speaking, I think they are just part and parcel of this minimalist lifestyle. And I think they kind of make me who I am today. So I hope this video can trigger some thought process and some realization for you on how you can make minimalism better in your life. And if you realize you have some mistakes, don't reject them because there's always something you can learn from it and be grateful that you have this realization. So what are some of the mistakes you have done throughout your minimalism journey? I'd love to see them down in the comment section below. And hey, your like button can do a lot to help with the growth of this channel. It's like a blessing for the YouTube algorithm to push my videos to like-minded people like you. So if you can do that, I truly appreciate it. And if you are new here, I make videos on minimalism and self-development. If you are interested, you might consider hopping on as a subscriber. I'll continue to make more videos like this. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again next week. Bye-bye.